I mm -hmm. saw some comments online and um, yeah. some people, I saw a guy, he wrote on one of my posts, he said, I'm a foolish son oh. who refused to bring glory to my father and the Lord, Apostle Michael Oropo. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that you message. See, I these people are lying, you know. These are all lying, brethren. I laugh. I said, I just deleted it. Normally, I don't talk, you know. Oh, okay. But I feel. Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. Uh, you met Papa Sam yesterday. Yes, yes, yes. Amazing he man. He was not aware of my discussion with God or what this thing I'm telling yes, you happened yes, between yes. me, the Holy Ghost, and, and the, the devil. devil. <laughs> <laughs> so he came and told me, say, Victor, why are you angry with God? Say, God said you are offended in him. Oh. I God spoke to him. About the incident my God. that took place in my secret place. I never uttered a word to anybody. Mm. Say, God said you are angry with him. Why are you angry with God? Mm. So for the first time, it dawned on me that God was actually aware mm. of my needs. Of your needs. But he was more interested in what he was achieving in me. Hallelujah. So mm. that ended offense till today. So a lot of times, God is actually aware of our needs. Mm -hmm. But if it seems as though it tarries, he's more interested at that moment in what he's working Walk, into you walking into with us. those exercises. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned Papa Sam, an interesting, loving man of God. Um, I think you've mentioned him to me that he was your first disciple. Tell me what was the, uh, what was it like, your relationship with him in Calabar there, the discipleship, what was it like? Okay, um, towards the end of my service, he came to NYC orientation, um, he okay. came to NYC, uh, NCCF rather, sorry, to mm. preach. You know, we had a state conference then and he was part of the speakers. The speakers, okay. So when he spoke, he, he made altar call for missions, those mm. interested in missions. Mission. And I saw myself. You are passionate. <laughs> <laughs> volunteering for missions. Wow. And that was how we connected. So when mm. I was done serving, he had a place just like what you're doing now. Oh, okay. Yes, he okay, had okay. a place. Where with, people stay, yes. brethren. Okay. So that was what gave me the opportunity to present to God. After I was done, I went to his place and mm. uh, he started, I started asking questions. questions. He answers. Okay. And, um, like that till I became the mission coordinator in Calabar. Wow, glory yes. to God. And that was how I met him and built a strong relationship. That is, that is powerful, you know, a, a loving man indeed. Now, um, let's talk about journey, your journey of growth. Um, from Calabar, how did you proceed? Because obviously you're not in Calabar, you're in Abuja. So I want to know, and we want to know, the journey from Calabar. How, how did God move you from there? And where did God move you to? And what was like the next phase of your preparatory um, program in this? Yeah, so just throw light on that. Okay. Um, I was in Calabar, I think in 2016, and there was a, a conference in Unical. Okay, uh, Unical, okay. Aposarome was invited as a guest minister. Mm. And um, I happened to serve with a brother that was staying in his house then. Oh. Yes, I've uh, forgotten his name now. Native brother. Wow. He was living in his house then. So and that the, was what year? That was 2016. Wow. Yes, 2016. So the brother said he was going to see him. Okay. That we should attend the program. So I followed him. And because the brother stays in his house, he granted us access oh, to, see to see Papa. Papa. And when I met him, um, he told me that, um, well, God has something serious with you. Mm. But it depends on how serious you are with God. Mm. I was in the chapel praying till evening, and then during that period, he made a declaration about so 12 angels with 12 government, 12 intercessors mm. were rising and all mm. of that. Mm. Though I didn't fall under the power, yes, I was sir. just weeping. Wow. You know, I was just weeping where I was, and, and that was how I left that meeting. And then after I was done with service 2015-2016, I went to... The Lord spoke to me. I went for contact, one of the... I was in contact. Exactly, because, yeah. yes. So I went for contact in October, and there was a, cha a little challenge. They okay, had the, okay. the generator. Oh, I, I remember that. Yes, 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 yes. So Daddy was on yes, the and remember. he said, you need three people that can give them 20,000 oh, to fix the generator. Fix the yes, so I was part of the three persons, and that was how I, I met God's servant, Apostle Michael Rubo. Okay, yes. that's how you connected. Yes, because okay, okay. he was the second person. Okay. So the third person, I can't remember him. Oh, again. wow. So when we gave the money that he called us into his office and 
he prophesied to us. He told mm. Mike, ah, you, you already have my spirit. Then he looked at me and said, mm. God have something for you, but you are not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was <laughs> always <laughs> offended because what? <laughs> I, I was fasting all through, praying all through, doing everything. Every how else should I be ready? You know. <laughs> but after the country, I went back to to put, uh, Calabar and continued my mission. Your work. mission work. And after some time, the Lord, I had a vision. The vision I was sharing. I saw mm. Papa riding a Vespa machine. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, I remember. There was nobody vision. behind him, but I saw myself seated on his mm. neck, and he was moving. From that scene, I saw us in a plane together. And then after the, the, the tour with the plane, we returned back to Makodi with a trailer load of harvest. All kinds of fruits were in this, mm -hmm. was in this trailer. That's, that's massively prophetic. As a prophet, I can see what that, that's massively, massively prophetic. Yes. So when and I, you're having this vision as of that time. 2016. Everything that I'm living now mm. happened in 2016. The whole download came in 2016. Both this ministry that I, yes, I am doing now. Yes, yes. So when I came out of that vision, the Lord spoke to me. He said, it's time to go to Makodi. Mm. So I went to Makodi and joined Adula. Uh, I did the, the Bible first school. basic course. I think you people were the first set. No, we were the second. Second set, okay. Mike, was, Mike said we were the first. Okay, okay. Yeah, so okay. when we went, we were the second set, second set okay. of the Adula school. I went to Makodi and did the first basic course. And um, mm. at this point, I didn't know that the Lord wanted me to stay in Makodi. Food, and you had food. not officially submitted to Apostle Arame yet? No, not okay. yet. Okay. So after the basic course, I went back to Calabar again. Mm. Then in one encounter, again, the Lord said, move. Okay, I returned back for the Adulam the, uh, regular yes, yes, course. a regular course here. Yes. It was after the regular course, the Lord now spoke to me. He said, stay here. Wow. Yes. Say so stay here. That was that should be 2017, 2018 now. This is after you've labored in Calabar already. Yes. You so abandoned everything and then start again. So stay here. So we, we, we I stay there. Mm. Already from the basic class, I was found out. I don't know mm. how they found me out. So they started giving me okay. a microphone to lead prayer okay. in the ministry. So beautiful. So uh, uh, how did you come about submitting to Apostle Arome and what was the training like? You know, in RCM, for those who may not have an idea of what the training is like in RCM, because, you know, today, um, a lot of people tend to gravitate towards men of God that have some form of, you know, visibility, you know, they like the way they teach, and on, on TV, they see the manifestations, and that, you know, pushes them towards this man, and, you know, a lot of them come, I experience it too, they come and tell you, oh, just lay hand on me, let me get the impartation and power, but... At least I know personally that true impartation comes by discipleship. Because if you read scripture, you discover that a non-disciple was never imparted by Jesus. Yeah. The people he imparted consciously mm. were the people that submitted to discipleship. So how was the RCN discipleship program like? How was that environment? Because personally, I know it helped me. Yeah. There were a lot who were all running amok until we came under that ecosystem. So just give us an idea of how that ecosystem was like and how it affected you, maybe throw some lights on examples of your, your routine, the routines that you kept, and yes, let's... Okay, um, thank you so The much. captain. <laughs> <laughs> um, my experience at the RCN camp was, was heaven on earth because mm. that is where I gained stability, I gained some level of maturity, mm. and a lot of stuff. You know, um, I listened to Papa a lot, I yes, listened to yes. the sermon, so... I already understood and understood his principles. Yes, yes, yes. So when I got to Makodi, I was not in a rush to meet with him. Mm. I, and one thing I observed there is you learn by observation. Observation, that's true. Yes, they they, they throw the platform open, open for you. Just learn. Look at what is happening. Take what you can take. Apply to yourself and mm. grow. And which is what I did exactly. Um, I love that. When I I went, I saw that the tent was never closed. Yes, it was always open. It was always open. I remember we were sleeping there those days. Yes, again, uh, there is a structure. So when it became clear to me that I was supposed to submit to Daddy, mm. I, I knew that he was still working at that time. Yeah, it was so quite he busy. never had enough time to, for anybody. But there were men that had his spirit. And exactly. Mm. And he said, submit to me through this man. That oh, was, yes, 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 yes. You got close to Daddy Chief Don. Yes, exactly. Chief Don. Yes, 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 I understand. Chief Donatus. I and um, I think 
Apostle Rogbo and yes. you. Yes, and me that time, yes. We were directly under, under his him. supervision. And yes, because he's yes, a yes. prayer man. Yes. Me and him connected so deep. It was, <laughs> so it was beautiful. Anytime he comes to the tent, he will see me in the hall praying. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> Every time he comes around, he see me there praying. And he just fell in love with me. Oh. And, uh, he started showing me, okay, on the stage, do like this. Mm. Don't do like this. Do like this. Don't do like this. You know? mm. So he took that responsibility, uh, responsibility of supervision. Of supervision. And, and then Papa was just there for the oversight. You oversight. Know? Okay. And I'll tell you something. My first interaction, I was trying to say it on my platform on Sunday, but I couldn't okay, because, because of, of time. time. Yes, yes, yes. My first interaction with Daddy was, he called me. He said that, um, do you have international passport? I said, no, sir. He mm. said, okay, he counted 23,000 wow. and gave it to me. He said, go and get a passport. I want to send you to Uganda. Mm. Uh, I want you to go to Uganda. And um, wow. uh, when you come back, then I know you have learned the song of elders. He said, in Uganda... The women there will want to come and have mm. children for you. Mm. They will offer themselves for you. So I think that was another way of taking your training to another to level. Another level. So oh. I was oh. conscious of that. While we were preparing for the takeoff to Uganda, mm -hmm. um, a lot of stuff. Um, that, you know, before that time, me and uh, Apostle Michael became very close. In yes. fact, we were living in the same house at that moment. Okay, okay, yes, okay, so, okay, okay. And um, the Lord spoke to me in 2019. He told me, 2018, 18th of December, 2018 was my birthday. Yes. So I took three days dry fasting. You used to fast a lot. You still fast a lot. <laughs> you still fast. Trusting the Lord for a word for the next mm. phase. And uh, he spoke to me, said, uh, 2019 was the year of emergence. I never knew what he meant. I remember you told me that. Then. So, because um, Mike uh, came back from his visitation to his father, and he told me, so oh boy, I was praying, and... The Lord spoke to me, he said, 2019 was the year of emergence. I said, ah, this is what the Lord told me while I was praying. Yes. Home. Wow. He said, well, forget that thing. I did tell you, waiting God tell me. <laughs> 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 you know, and we started calling ourselves the year of emergence. Emergence. The emergence of the monarch, you know. We, 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 I remember. Exactly. I remember so, things, yeah. oh, we now decided to draft a program of fasting, prayer, and study. Yes, yes, yes. We did that for like from... January into March. I want to ask something. You know, sorry for cutting short, sir. You know, you told us you were staying in tent, and then yes. now you're saying you're staying with uh, Mike in that place. I met you people. So, how did you come about even going there? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I became, I grew very I knew fast. Because I tent commander that time. Yes, I, I grew very <laughs> yes. fast in tent because mm. of my commitment to the prayer and oversight. And okay. That. So, I became the tent commandant. And then, um, after my Adulam program in 2018, mm. uh, the Lord told me to stay. At that time, they introduced something in the Adulam program where students are sent to different ministries on yes, request yes, 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 for yes, internship. Yeah. Yes. So my friends that we finished together wanted to okay. go to Abuja with for internship. Plan. Okay. But in the place of prayer, the Holy Spirit said, "No, stay here." So while I stayed, wow, most of me them and uh, yes, me and Oropo now connected deeply. So mm. um, I was in his house for this fasting I was talking about. Okay. Yes, okay because okay, he was okay, traveling. Okay, okay. So I told him, well, since you will not be around, and I, I want, want a place yes, to, yes, yes. to just stay with the Lord. He said, no problem, I should go to the house. So when he came back, after we shared our similar yes, 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 encounters, yes, yes. he now told me that, okay, I'm welcome to stay since he stays in his room alone, alone. that we could stay together. I think our brother, Reverend Hughes, too, was yes, around. Yes, Reverend Hughes. <laughs> no, the house was a two Ah, it two was an amazing flat. time. Yes, yes. Yeah. Reverend Hughes and one of his pastors were in one room. Yeah, and yeah. And Apostle was in one room. So I and Apostle now stayed in one room. Oh, so and that was when you were really now connected. We were really okay. now connected. So, and we started that program. And I think on the 1st of March, that was his birthday, there was mm. a, a message that went online. And the Lord amplified it. Mm. So his invitations and everything increased. increased. And one day he was traveling. He asked me, we should travel together. And based on oh. how the discipline I have been and the True. level of understanding I've had, Papa always shout, don't take off like a tornado. tornado. <laughs> <laughs> so I say, ah, uh, Lord, I went to tent. I have to go and pray. Lord, if it's not time, please take it from his mind. Because mm. I was actually... Uh, a bit not You've always been a cautious person when yeah, it comes to this. Yeah, I was very things, conscious yes. not to offend the Holy Spirit, and mm -hmm. I didn't want to go ahead of my exactly, time. Exactly, exactly. Because you were still under discipleship exactly. with Papa. So mm. I went, pray, and 
the next time he brought it up, I said, okay, we should. Mm. So I, we traveled together. I think our first mission together was in a, Obubura, is it Obubura or Obudu? Okay. A unical Obudu branch. The power of God broke out. He preached and uh, he called me to lead the people to pray. We prayed. We prayed. Was this your first public? Yes, meeting, meeting. with him. Okay, with him. Okay, yes, okay. Yes. Prior to that, Reverend Tony has given me a meeting. Yes, yeah, yeah, obviously, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. That. So, but well, that was the first major outing with him. And then from there, we moved to, uh, I think he had two meetings clashing. One in okay, Lafayette, okay, okay, one okay. in yes, 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 Anambra yes. State, Newe. So he asked me to go to Newe for him and take a meeting, the first and second session. Since he would so be in the other place. So that was the meeting he preached, Four Wings of Revival. Oh, yeah, that message yes, really and went. Yes, preach, yes, yes. And I prayed, and the thing went everywhere. Mm. So it looked as if we bonded deeply in this thing, and then we started traveling mm, together. Brothers. Yes. Mm. Uh, I was a bit conscious because I was still the conscious power, yeah. of the fact that. But then I think I, I, was, I took a lot of things lightly mm. because uh, I assumed that um, Papa was happy with the movement we were making together, which I know he was, yeah. uh, but um, there was no uh, official seal on it. Okay, I, okay, I, okay, in my so. mind, I felt, okay, it was still RCN ministry okay, that okay, 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 okay. we were moving together. And um, it happened that when the wave of what was happening outside came home, up and now made it official. Okay, okay, yes, okay. okay. To told, just give you people that backing. Exactly. Oh, beautiful. Now told Mike to uh, oversee the youth arm of, of the ministry. Of the ministry, okay. Papa has always been supportive of, you know, has, almost yes. everyone that has come under his wings. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Yes. So it now, uh, now made you and him the pastors of the youth. Yes. So, um, he now allowed your traveling ministries exactly. for the OK, I understand now. Exactly. That's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You know, okay. I, um, I, I need to say this at this juncture. I okay. saw some comments online. And um, yeah. some people, I saw a guy, he wrote on one of my posts. He said, I'm a foolish son oh. who refused to bring glory to my father and the Lord, Apostle Michael Rope. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that you message. See, I these people are lying, you know. These people are lying, brethren. I love. I said, I just deleted it. Normally, I don't talk, you know. Oh, okay. But I feel. But what would make them say that? You know, there's, I don't there's nothing know. like that. Throughout our travel together, Mike has never called me a son anywhere. His friends will call each other, you know. We call exactly. each other brother I wonder friend. where they got this narrative from. But to anyone that wants to know, okay, okay. We were both sons. In RCN, mm. I was a pastor there. He was also a pastor. He, pastor. he was a lecturer too, I Ex think. In the Bible school, which I was also, after my graduation, I was also inducted into okay, the okay, faculty. Okay, okay, into the faculty. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we, we started together there. And, uh, so you both, because I knew that time you guys used to travel a lot. Yes. You know, you, you would call me that time, you guys, he would call me. Sometimes you would call me and tell me about, you know, the things you guys encountered on the road, the challenges. Many times you guys escaped accidents ah, and ah, yeah, it's it amazing. Was, it was not funny. Huh? I remember those days I used to be very pissed off. I said, you guys should rest. How will young men like this be? <laughs> One of the scariest <laughs> aspects of it was when we went to Wukari. I remember that day, ah. yes. Wukari, Zakibia. Was, they were fighting. It was the last bus stop. Yes. If a thief man cannot carry you across. Across that place, yeah. So they drop us at the last bus stop at Zakibia. And then we have to wait for an house man mm. to carry us and cross. A Juku man can't cross. That's amazing. A native man can't cross. So an house man cross. The whole place was like a dead zone. Wow. You could leave, if a pin dropped, you could hear it. And fear was palpable. Dead and it was a communal clash. When we were done with the program leaving, they were dragging a corpse off the road. You see, a lot of times people don't know why Jesus, you know, would exalt certain persons. I remember those days too, Papa too would travel all over Nigeria, spending his own personal money, and you guys too would hazard your safety, your lives, and this was because of youths. Many times, the Lord, the Lord has been merciful, you know. Mm. There was a time we were going to the east, I think, close to Oka. Immediate, this bus overtook us on mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. And after a few minutes when we came, we saw the bus parked with double traffic gate, people coming out of the bush. 
<laughs> they were just robbed, arm robber. So <sighs> are there, if the danger wants to happen, it happens before we get there or after, after we you have left. Yes. Oh, yes. I know most of the times this special protection, you know, is because first of all, God sent you people. And number two, there is nice spiritual oversight over people because you just imagine, you know, what would have happened, God forbid, the two sons of Apostle Arome are going to preach and then this and that happen. Yeah. Uh, we, we give God praise for, for that, you know, we give God praise. Had known Apostle Arome from around 2, 9, 2, 10, especially 2, 10, if you've been in Makori for long, you'll know that there is a yearly program they hold, they call it Alarm of the Spirit, an amazing program that has imparted many years in Makori there. So I think 2, 10, in fact, there are two programs we normally attend around that general. You have Alarm of the Spirit, and then you have School of Prophets in Change Community. Prophet Justice Ogwiji was the one who, you know, was pioneering that. And um, that's when I first saw Apostle Arobe. Okay. We already knew that, oh, there's one apostle called Apostle Arobe, you know, whose English is difficult to understand, <laughs> you know. But um, <laughs> well, he's sweet. He's beautiful. Yeah. And you know in those days, <laughs> oh, God, you know, Papa has just reduced it to carry people along. Exactly. <laughs> You, you know you are receiving something, but you can't ah, write it. You, you, can't, know, you write. can't write it down. It's life. That it's life. Honestly, it's yeah. life. And you see, that fountain that got better with him was not too common. I remember in those days, the, this all trans, um, Papa Chris Delvan told her this all trans, you know, when he was worshiping, mm -hmm. he would speak, mm -hmm. and, and Apostle Papa was coming with this fresh thing in Makodi in a place dominated by orthodoxy and, you know, conservative kind of Christians. So yeah. We, yeah. I saw him. And I remember in that program, I think it was Methodist that Alam of the Spirit was held. And I saw him and I said, what kind of man is this? We had a small prayer group in those days, but in Bearers, you know, with our mentor at that time, Pastor Victor Onucha, amazing man of God. God is also using greatly Makodi there. Um, and then we attended. It sparked up something in my spirit. You know, but the man was like a spirit, you know, so you, you don't know whether I was Aramis in town or not. You just, we, we see him as this God because, yeah, spirit yes. Deep. And then we are not privileged to meet that time in RCN tent and we connected and then I packed my things and started staying um, in that place. It was amazing. You remember, I remember many nights I'll be running away from Naivich. <laughs> you know, I was coming from o o Omega background, you know, so um, that's where we're coming from. Okay. I was a member, yes, I was a member of Omega Fire Ministry at that time. I connected probably to Omega, when I was in Oju. Amazing man of God I served under there, Pastor Jake Sphere Morgan, amazing, okay, yeah, lovely Pastor man. Jake. Till today, he's still part of my life. He will be the one, those days will tell me, Joel, you have a gift. Gift is good, but focus on the word of God. Mm. Focus on the word. You know, and the mentality we had is manifestation. manifestation. Live Bible and manifest. Manifest. What can your God do? <laughs> what can your God do? <laughs> <laughs> and I thank God, because although his stream had been bettered mm. in me, if we were not governed by scriptures, and that's why I appreciate God for sorry, man. If we were not governed by scriptures, we would have entered into error by now. Yeah. Terribly into error. Yeah, obviously. You know. Obviously. And so I think that process I remember the first time physically now spoke to Papa. I met him. I said, I want I want to start up a prayer. This that started staying in ten. You know, he would observe you first. He would not say anything to you. <laughs> Papa told me. He said, This discussion, um, we should not be having it yet. That you is in the next two years. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they, sorry to cut yes. you. These, because I understood these principles when I came into Makodi, I never attempted to see No one. It. it was the one that called for me when the time came. I stayed there for like two years. Two years without any contact with him. It was my friend that motivated me. He said, he said go on, go on, ask him, go on, tell him about the ministry. I went there, I said, you know, he knows I used to call my ministry girls, I'm a revival ministry. <laughs> So when he told me that I was heartbroken, I said, oh, God, why did I even go and disturb? I said, as a young stop, but he was observing us, you know. And um, amazing um, time we had. I need to say this before I ask the next question. Amazing time we had with Papa. I remember Papa used to feed us free of charge because none of our parents gave us anything to contribute. So he would feed all of us. I remember um, those days even Reverend Hughes was staying there. Ikoro, me. Yeah. Mike would come once in a while. You know, he would be coming because of us, you know, mm. from his place to, to stay with us there, from his sister's place, I think, to stay with us and rest. And it was an amazing time we had with, um, with that discipleship. And that, a, a conclave was actually forming under um, our mentor, Chief Donald, who's the Papa set over us. Yeah. Uh, but at some point, when this whole thing started coming, you know, it's no news that it seemed as though there were certain lines we unknowingly crossed. You know, and as young men, 
There were certain things we did, which if we look back today, we say, ah, we shouldn't have taken this step because now we know leadership, we know submission, we know that they're certain. Yeah, so um, I would, today we see media, media houses painting their own story. I don't know where they're getting these their stories from, but I want you to also throw a little like that if you want to, you know, on um, what caused the rift, how you found yourself in Abuja, and how you now reconnected back with Papa. You know, that, that timeline, what happened during that period? <laughs> Professor <Joe. laughs> The captain. <laughs> You know, this thing, I've been quiet about it for the yes, past never three years. Thank you. Yes, Thank I've you. I've never made any public statement. Public statement, yes, yes. I no refer to it at all. And the reason is because I, I choose to be very, I choose to be private. Yes, and, yes, I understand. That's true. I, I believe in talking to God about my issues. Your issues, yes. Um, but, uh, yeah, of course, like I said, um, when me and our God servant, Apostle mm. Michael, became very close, our relationship grew from just acquaintances to brothers. Mm. And I remember why, how it happened, you know. During my graduation from Adulam in 2018, they were doing impartation service for us and for mm. the faculty members. So I think it was Apostle Gideon. Papa had prayed for him. Yes, and yes, yes, Apostle yes. Gideon was praying for Apostle Michael. And uh, I was watching. And then it was as if something jumped from him. And landed on me. Mm. That was the first time I fell under power. Mm. And I was on the ground shouting, I will go, I will go, I will go. <laughs> I didn't know where I was going to, you know. <laughs> I was shouting, I will go. That's not I, where I was going to. I didn't know what was up. <laughs> so it was after that scene that me and him now became very, very close. close. And then I had to move to his house and then mm. we started praying and fasting together. Started doing a lot of stuff together. So as the Lord opened his way, I was already in his mm. house. He told me we need to start traveling. And I saw the, 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 the boarding, how massive it was. I, I said, I okay, it when I received time, yeah. the clarity, we joined, I joined him and we started moving. As school laborers. Yes. Mm. Though then his horn was what was exalted. So oh, I was yes, just yes, 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 helping. Yes, the supporting help. road. And I remember he always told me, he said, Kai, Ogbe, I don't want you to be known as my PA. True, you know, true, true, true. So was, was everywhere that, we yeah. go, he he always yes, I can introduction that that's true. and yes. all of that. But again, God was so gracious to us. So one of his disciple, one I yes, think yes, Owena yes, Sunday, yes. God spoke okay, to him okay. in Kano to relocate to Makodi. Oh, that was so all lesson they bought him from you. Yes. Yeah, so when okay. Owena came, Owena took over the job I was doing as organizing the okay, meetings yeah, yeah, and yeah, all of that, true. and then I focused on the traveling. Some of the meetings he couldn't go. Yes. I went for him and then, and then, your then own personal started invitation. receiving invitation. Mm. That was how we started. But unfortunately for us, um, you know, Satan know the rest. <laughs> Satan That's know the a rest. new slogan. Uh, yes. Satan know the rest. Satan know the rest. <laughs> unfortunately for us, um, there were few persons that were not, not comfortable happy or okay. comfortable with what the Lord was doing with us at that time. And, uh, we started hearing all kinds of stuff. And Satan also manipulated us, you know, what was not said. And ah, all. It, was, it was terrible. It was terrible. It was a terrible time, you know. But I think it was in both ways. It was both ways. They said, Mike said this, they say I said this, and Papa's ear were filled with what. You people are hearing that those people also are saying things, and it was both. Uh, <sighs> they said Papa has cost us. Giving us five years to die. <laughs> you remember? But this was the same man who said to me before that, okay, go into this ministry. Yeah, you know, no. At the initial phase, he released us into this youth ministry, mm. campus invasion, and all of yes, that. Yes, yes, But when they started coming back with negative feedback to him of what we were doing. But what type of things did you people hear? And how did you people okay. verify that this. For instance, like this, yeah. Um, for me, yeah, they, just speak about it. Yeah, for me, they told, they told from what I heard, they said, I said that if I leave RCN, the prayer arm of the ministry was going to die. <laughs> but you meant prayer then. <laughs> Satan, know the rest. <laughs> Satan, know the rest. I, I know myself, I'm not um, this that foolish so to, you're not talking to, you, to make such a trance, but of course, I might maybe jokingly or Okay, so that you may not know. Exactly. Yeah. So I had to take the responsibility. As a white son, that's I was in Casina when um, Apostle Michael called me and said, um, Papa has released him and um, 
I told him to tell me that I am also released. You know, mm. but I, I knew there was a problem. So okay. I was ministering in Kasina. I left Kasina, flew down to Abuja, then moved to Makodi, and um, I rushed down to Papa's house. Papa said he was not going to see me. Mm. I went like three, four times. He said he not is, is not seeing me. So I became frustrated. And at this point, I just got a house because the house where I and Mike were. Yes, yes, We've yes, got in a yes, lot yes, of yes, disciples you guys that were coming. Anymore, yeah. Yes, Mike moved out. I was the one staying there. So the disciples were becoming much. Too so much. I also had to get another place. Yeah, I remember you told me I yes, moved you got an apartment. Yeah. I moved into the house one week. Only one week? I stayed there one And that one week was, I spent it in dry fast. Okay. Because at this point, I was confused on what to do. Um, Papa was not willing to see me. He was not willing to hear my own side of the story. Mm. And I was released. But it was later I discovered that he understood <laughs> how mm. close I was with Mike. Okay. And he respected that um, our that relationship. Bond. And yes, bond. yes, yes, yes. He knew that if Mike leave, I might also want to leave. Yes, yes. So it's so okay, you guys just go together. Exactly. Maliciously did it. Exactly. So, wow. But I wasn't comfortable in my spirit. So I went into the closet and I spent like seven days in drive house asking the Lord what to do. Uh, on the fourth day, the Lord showed me a vision. I saw a quick vision of myself praying at Glory Dome. Mm. So the Holy Spirit told me, go to Abuja and be praying there for now. Mm. That was how. Remember I called you? Yes, I remember. Yeah. Uh, and um, I said, oh boy, it's like God said, make a day come Abuja. Mm. I said, oh boy, come here, come here, come And that was how. And you came around. I came around and I was praying. I obeyed what he said, but leaving Warren Park to Glory Dome wasn't easy. At you all. Know, I was driving there every day, and then the security structure there were, didn't mm. make what I really wanted. That's true. So that made me even believe that maybe God wanted me to submit to the Patriarch. Uh, okay, Dr. Paul. in your mind. Yes, because I saw him in visions and all of that, and, and I was granted access. I actually saw him when Daddy was not uh, responding to me again. Mm. So I knew I needed to quickly hide my head somewhere. Mm. But, but you know, to chip in something, a lot of people don't know that when we have these issues with our spiritual father, sometimes it's actually a trial of sonship. Yeah. You know, if I, if I knew the things I know now, there are certain hasty decisions one would have not taken, no, no matter not, what. You know, one yeah. thing I, 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 I would like to say, you know, men, elder, elder brothers like Reverend Opore mm. and elders like Evangelist, okay, Ike Chukus, yes, Peters, yes. they spoke to me, they told me that no matter what, I should stay. And mm. um, I shouldn't move yet. Let them see how they can pacify Papa. Yes, yes, yes. But I, I told them that, Kai, at this level, I don't think Papa will trust me. Oh. Uh, if I'm to continue to stay, um, I'll be paying a price too heavy for me to pay to because be, okay. I will now be forced to begin to do things to win his lawyer, to show him that and I'm And that's not how we are taught to serve. Exactly. Yes. Uh, and then I will be forced to be living a pretentious it's life. It's the eye service. I service. So I, did, I, I observe it as in. So when the Lord gave me the option of coming over to Abuja to pray, I was happy. Hmm. Um, it was in that prayer season that Apostle Michael reached out to me. He said he has received clearance to start his ministry. And um, since this is what we are facing, he doesn't think we should go our separate way yet. That I should, if God has not given me, go ahead to start my work. I should join him. Let's build this ministry he was about to start. Okay. So join him as an assistant or? It's just to support what okay, he Okay, as a friend, yes, since what, you're already on ground. Yes, exactly. And he, it was a clear discussion. He told me, anytime I feel it's time to move. Okay, you can now go I on your you know, way. Okay. And, we give the support. And that was exactly what that we did. That period I was jumping in my parlor. <laughs> telling people you are fake. <laughs> <laughs> and when we started, the Lord showed us mercy, you know. Amazing what God is doing with him now. Uh, yeah. But during the, I saw the glory that was coming, the affluence, you know, in the place of prayer. I saw everything. Mm. It was so clear. So I knew that if this thing should hit me here, I might not be willing to go and start this labor I'm laboring. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but... And then twice, I, um, when the 18 became glaring, after we started for like six, eight months, mm. that it was time for me to step aside. I remember you told me, yes. I told him. He felt it wasn't time. So he said, it's not time that I should reach out. Um, he now called our uh, elder. Uh, our elder. And elder said, Kai, Kai, Kai. He said, it's not time. I said, okay. So we, we died the matter. 
You sacrificed a lot. Too. Yes, wow. and we, we continued. But after like a month or two, it became very obvious. Mm. So I had to tell him again, I said, bro, this thing, man, I still didn't get a more. Mm. He said, ah, that means this time around, it must be the Lord that if that's the case, um, it is good to jump in when, while the water is still being steered. And that no problem, the church was going to pray for me mm. and, and bless me so that I would go ahead and do. Which they did. Which they did. And uh, that was how I left and started this work. But this time we're still operating. You know, we're not yet connected back, reconnected back to power. When I, I knew that it was time <coughs> to leave, I knew that the Lord, every night, in fact, I told Mike, every night I will see Papa. Yeah, I remember you were After troubling me last night. Every <laughs> night I will see Papa. I will see myself lying down. I will see myself kneeling down. I see myself on the altar crying. For Papa. <laughs> It was terrible. I said, who is praying this prayer on my head? <laughs> Go so back to your father. You I, told, I told my, I said, boy, see what did happen. He said, Kai, it's like God is trying to heal my heart of, of bitterness. And you know, as an intercessor, you can't, you can't, you you can't, can't. keep grudges. Mm. Anybody who is in the business of prayer, you can't keep grudges. You know, you can't keep, you, so bitterness. That was not really, yes. it, that was not I've never known you to be a bitter person. No. So I, 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 I say that you should pray about it and let me know what it, it thinks. So it was later he wrote to me and told me that I th he thinks that um, since the Lord is steering me towards starting this work, I should reach out to Papa and let him know, uh, try to make peace and all of that. But at that time, I have already written to Papa based on what I was feeling. Okay. And that was when Papa said, this is your letter. Ten years. <laughs> <laughs> Our father. <laughs> I said, Daddy, please. You know, I didn't even understand it then. I was like, ah, okay, what exactly did I do mm. that or that? Is unforgivable, you know. I never knew. That was when wisdom ministered to me. You don't write letters to You don't to write, fathers. write letters to so go back. That's true. You know, you must have received a um, message from a lot of people. That's they true. want to submit to you. Yes, yes. No, no, no. I don't take it serious. You will not take them serious. Yes, you have to come. If you are serious, you'll come. You'll come. That's true. And that was the picture that came to me. And I had to travel down to Makoti. And I was amazed when that is for me. He, You're welcome. He welcomed me. Do you know that I started hearing that some people... Are describing as our father and lord as bitter and jealous and <laughs> they don't know the man god have mercy they don't know the man uh, you see i want to say this to our brethren watching please we are we are believers we are brethren we are christians um, i know a lot of time especially in this world of technology it is very easy to read your interpretation into someone's action mm -hmm. you know i'll see sometimes make a post somebody will start commenting oh why are men of god fighting each other codedly See, we have the same heart. The way I walk with God, if I offend the Spirit of God, and you can't sleep, you can't rest. I will come out public and say it. I've done it before, because I value heaven. That's how Apostle Aramis has trained us. Mm -hmm. The man is all about sincerity, honesty before God and men. You see, and a lot of times we have people out there, you know, who try to paint an image that would keep people away from you. Because they know that if they come close to you and interact with you, they'll find out something different. Mm -hmm. I think that's on that strategy of the devil. I feel that um, there's a gap in discipleship. And, uh, oh, yes, yes, yeah, yes, that's true. There's a gap in discipleship. What we have now is majorly fan, fan base. Oh, yes, yeah. fan base yes. instead of yeah. disciples. Okay. And you see a lot of striving for, for celebrityhood. Mm. And that is why it looks as if it is fanatic something that we are doing. Or, mm. So this person is for you. This person is against me. This That's person what makes it difficult now. It's difficult. So once some, a man of God is accepted by somebody and you are questioning the character of that person or his doctrine, they feel you are attacking, attacking. their celebrity or, or their man of God. And, and they will never sit down to They will not to sit listen. down to listen. And again, I think my generation, our generation, for instance, we have lost the appetite for the word of God. Yes. Um, a lot of people are just looking for... For instance, I observe when you put a controversial stuff online, it, it flies. It flies a lot. I notice when you put a, the word teaching, a, a nobody listens. Nobody it. wants a lot of people are watching this now. I, I believe because they feel, oh, maybe they're going to say something controversial. I know some media houses are actually what you will see this simple discussion now. You will see how they will they will they will read the it's, narrative. It's to because we're in the last days, the Bible mm. says they will not endure sound, sound doctrine. doctrine. Okay, it's eating ear, they want to know what is happening. And then the people on the pulpit are also under pressure to give them what they want to hear. Mm. And, that, the, and then again, YouTube is not making it easy. Easy anymore, yeah. Because there's a monetary value True as long it. as you can bring traffic to the 
And you also, people believe it. everything is done for clout. You know, if you, exactly. if you speak truth, oh, they're they doing say, it for clout. You know, I wrote something recently, and they said I was chasing clout. I told them, if I want to chase clout, I know what to do. True. We're not in this thing for popularity or for anything. True. I wrote about a song. I had an opinion about a song I listened to, and I felt... Uh, you were attacked? Ah. A lot of people felt, uh, ah, where you have started. Don't deviate from this part. Don't assist <laughs> <laughs> these people. Yeah, I've had all these people come. I said, oh, this was not the real message God sent you to preach. <laughs> were you there? Were you there when the message was given? <laughs> See, yeah. and this is also a call, you know, wh why I love this discussion, I think we're going to be having more feet with our mi various ministry, ministry friends, is to set records straight. Mm. You see, I can relate to the person, but not believe in the doctrine. In his doctrine. Exactly. Yeah. The fact that I shake your hands doesn't mean I will stand for everything you stand for. And there are many people in the body of Christ that do not agree with my approach of preaching. Mm -hmm. I won't force them to do mm -hmm. so because I have been called a prophet. There may be a person. Our backgrounds are different. Mm -hmm. Our trainings are different. But this is how I judge this is how I judge messages. Even though it seems to be presented in a harsh way, what is the aim of this message overall? Does it add to the quality of the gospel of Jesus being preached? If I follow this message, will it lead me to edification? Will it elevate my worship experience? Mm. Or is this thing making me go into the world? If I present an example now in my life and my character, imagine now you see me preaching here today and the next video you see is me dancing with a girl in the club. Mm. I can bring a revelation to tell you that um, the Lord accepts this idea. You know, I'm already saved, always saved. You know, my sins are... And do you know people will follow that? A lot of people will follow Listen, I, I observe and I, I discover that whatever you do in this life, mm. as long as you, you're bold enough to believe yourself and you're bold enough to sell your ideas mm. and you're confident enough to market it, you will have followers. That's true. Yes. That's true. If a, 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 in a highly cultured environment like Nigeria, a mm. cross-dresser can have over 5 million followers. Followers. Who are, follow who, who are the people? <laughs> so, and now there are thousands of persons that have decided to, to copy that lifestyle mm. because they were able to market what they represent positively. Mm. So, people follow anything. Just be confident. Just be bold about it. I know how to market it. I know how to market it. The only thing is Time is the judge of all things. All things, that's true. Yes. That's true. It was what uh, I think Gamaliel told the Pharisees yes. when they wanted to go after the disciples. They subjected to time. He said they rose among us one that, that claimed posed to be himself yes. as to be something, and he was not. And after his, after his demise, we can't find them. Leave these people alone. Mm. Thank you for watching. Please kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you always get notified whenever we post a new video. And don't forget to share. Thank you.